Hello everyone and welcome. In this video, we'll understand the two of the most important practical aspects of a PID controller: anti-windup for integrator and noise filter for differentiator. Let us start with anti-windup. Every real-life system has limitations. For example, you cannot give more than 24 volt to a 24 volt DC motor. The motor cannot run at a speed higher than the max rated speed because the mechanical parts may tear apart. You cannot have a PWM which has more duty than 100% and less duty than 0%. So, in all these systems, what we are seeing is saturation. Every real life system saturates. But in the control system we designed, we have never accounted for this limitation till now. We assume that the system is linear and the output will keep rising as I keep increasing the commanded input. But you know that I cannot command 1000 volt to a motor which is meant to operate only at 24 volts. Let us see how this will affect our control. In the last video, we tuned the PID controller for speed control of a DC motor. I have changed the PID gains here slightly and removed the differentiator to keep things simple. We have a nice fast response with reasonable overshoot. But there is a problem here. Let us take the actuator input which is the voltage input in this case. It goes more than 50 volt. But we know that it is not possible to give 50 volt to the motor. So I'll add a saturation block which will limit the voltage to 24 volt no matter what the commanded input voltage is. Now let us see the response. Oh, we have more overshoot now compared to the previous case. But we designed a controller to have very little overshoot. So what just happened? Let us understand using V and Vsat waveforms. V is the commanded voltage and Vsat is the voltage that the motor actually sees. Over here, V has become very high due to the integrator component of it shooting up. Or the actuator command is higher than what is required to maintain the speed of 5. So speeds will rise. Now the error is negative. Hence the integrator output starts reducing. This is called winding up the integrator. We can see V decreasing but it is still above 24 volt. Hence it will get saturated and the voltage to the motor will be 24 volt. Finally, when V drops below 24 volt, the speeds start dropping to the desired speed and we will reach a steady state. But how do we avoid this overshoot? There are different anti-windup schemes to avoid this issue. All of them more or less do the same thing but in different ways. We will look at the clamping method. The idea is simple. Stop the integrator from integrating if the commanded input has already saturated. The way to do it is. We compare the difference between the commanded input and the output of the saturation block. If these values are the same, that means saturation has not occurred yet and you do not need to do anything. But if the commanded input becomes greater than the saturation block output, then you have to stop integrating. Over here, you see there are two saturation blocks. The first one is the saturation for the PID output and the second one is the hardware saturation. For example, the hardware will itself not allow the voltage to go above 24 volt. But there is one more condition. Let us say that the PID controller is saturated. But it is actually trying to decrease output or in other words it is trying to come out of saturation. At that moment you do not want to stop the integrator. Hence we add another if condition to account for this. We multiply the error and the output of the PID block and check whether it's positive or negative. If the sign is negative that means the error is in opposite direction compared to the output of the integrator. In this case. We do not want to clamp the integrator because the integrator is winding up. Finally, we pass both these results to an AND gate and depending on the output of this gate, we decide whether integrator should integrate or not. Let us see this in action to get a better understanding. The PID controller block has inbuilt saturation. Then it also has an option of integrator anti wind up. I will just use the clamping method. Feel free to try out other methods. Now let us run the simulation. There is no overshoot and you can also check that the commanded input never crossed the saturation limit. So we have indeed solved the problem of integrator windup. There is one more case where the anti windup is needed. Let us quickly check what is the top speed of this motor. I'll give a 24 volt supply to the motor, run the simulation and we notice that the maximum speed possible is 6 radians per second. But what if I did not know this value? What I actually commanded the speed reference to 10. Let us see what happens without the anti windup. 
As expected, the speed will saturate at its max value of 6 radians per second. But there is an error between the reference and the output. So the integrator will keep integrating and we can see that in the voltage waveform. But you might say there is no problem over here, everything seems to work fine. But there is a problem. Let us see we want to go back to the zero speed. This is where things change. Let us see the result. Now it takes a long time before the speed starts to drop to zero. And that happens because the integrator has to wind up all the extra integration it performed. But the clamping method will solve this problem. Let us turn it on, simulate it again and check the results. Now the speed stopped dropping again as soon as the reference goes to zero. So now we know the scenarios in which the integrator will not perform well and how to solve that issue by clamping the integrator. Let us move to the differentiator term. As seen in the previous video, differentiator helps us in reducing the overshoot and can make the system stable. But you could fall in trouble if you do not design it well. Let us understand why. What is the differentiation of a step input? It is infinity. So imagine if the noise in our system has a step input. Then the differentiator term would go to infinity which would make the system unstable. But you will never find a step noise in real life systems. But what about high frequency noise? Just for the sake of this example, let us say we have two types of noises. One is sin 2 pi 100 t and the another is sin 2 pi 10,000 t. If these noises are present in the system, then the differentiator term will differentiate these sinusoidals. So we get 2 pi 100 cos 2 pi 100 t and 2 pi 10,000 cos 2 pi 10,000 t. We can clearly see that the high frequency signal will contribute much more to the differentiator term than the low frequency noise. And any noise signal can be broken into sum of sinusoids. But what if I can reduce the value of A then I can minimize the contribution of high frequency noise. I can do that using a low pass filter which would attenuate all the high frequency components. This is exactly how a differentiator would be implemented in real world applications. We have seen earlier that differentiator term can be written in S domain as KD into S. But in applications, we will add a low pass filter N upon S plus N to minimize the high frequency impact. N is the cutoff frequency of the filter. Let us check out the simulation. The PID block in Simulink already has the low pass filter added to the differentiator and the value of N determines the cutoff frequency. Let us keep the cutoff frequency to 10,000 radians per second and run the simulation. The speed follows the reference well. But just see the actuator input. It is oscillating from 0 to 24 volt and this is not a stable controller at all. Let us reduce the value of N to 50 radians per second so that we eliminate most of the high frequency noise. We will run the simulation again. Now the actuator input looks good. So you should implement the differentiator term very carefully as it is capable of damaging your system. In this video, we looked at two important practical aspects of PID implementation, anti-windup and noise filter for differentiators. In the next video, we will see another important practical aspect related to the discrete time implementation. See you next time.